All right, so let's add in a few more assets over here, and I'm just going to go and dump in everything uh, that's in the more game assets folder, and that uh, folder might grow in time. Uh, you can see I do have some 2x images in here. Heck, if I wanted, I could throw in some 3x ones, but uh, this is a pretty small little graphic anyway. It's uh, it's actually the same size as our tile, so these are uh, 32. Well, this one, the 1x size is 32 by 32, so obviously that's 64 by 64. And there's our <coughs> dot munching guy. <laughs> uh, green, totally different, and he's got a sliver of an eyeball, right? Um, okay, so... Uh, now that we've got him, let's uh, let's go over here to our actions.sks file. Every uh, Sprite Kit project uh, comes with uh, one of these uh, included. We don't need this pulsing though, so let's go ahead and just right click on that, delete that, go over here to a uh, new action, let's call it chomp. Okay, create that. Uh, and then, let's see, let's go over here to our, um, again, hit the plus sign over here, go to your objects. You normally wouldn't think this is an object but animate with textures option. So I'm gonna drop that right onto there. And uh, now what I need to do, here, let me fold that back up, is uh, include in uh, some of our textures over here. So uh, one more time, let's go, uh, now we can go over here to the image one. And we're just gonna take uh, these images, drop them on in. Uh, don't worry about trying to find your at 2x ones. They're just automatically going to be included uh, just by the very fact that you have them in here uh, as the uh, 2x asset. And uh, now let's set the speed to this to be 0 0.25. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a great way to test this or see it in here. Uh, you know, playing it is going to do nothing really. Um, uh, but what we do want to do is uh, loop it. So just uh, click into here and then just hit this uh, little looping infinite icon. So it's just going to basically it's just going to be an action that we apply to our sprite, which uh, doesn't actually exist yet. So let's go ahead and uh, make it exist. And to do that, uh, let's just go find our color sprite, drop it on in here. And let's set the size of this to be 32 by 32. And let's go ahead and find a nice spot for this guy. Uh, Code-wise, I think what I'm going to do is just place this at the first avail available spot, which I believe is, is right over here anyway. And then if you want to go ahead and just texture it with something initially, well, I don't know why it's doing that. <laughs> do you like the wall more? What, <laughs> what is the deal here? Do you like the dot? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a confusing one. You know what? Let's do this. Let's just undo everything, and we'll just leave you as a nice red square for now. So programmably, we will apply your texture if you're going to be a pain. Uh, let's give it an instance name. All right, so this is, if you're totally unfamiliar with instance names, uh, it's what we get to refer to uh, the, the player as with code. Um, and in theory, you could have uh, uh, two instances of the same name. That's all right. Uh, but... Um, well, <laughs> ignore I said that, really. We don't need to worry about it now. Uh, so anyway, this is just going to be our player. And is there anything else we need to consider in here? Again, we're not going to give it a physics definition or anything like that. That was kind of my, when I start out, started out to do this project, my main requirement was I don't want to do any sort of physics stuff. <clears throat> um, because that's, I think, what was most problematic about the last time I taught this uh, pack style lesson. Uh, that was relying too heavily on the physics. It's a neat kind of thing to consider doing, uh, you know, trying to build a Pac-Man style game of physics uh, in there. But uh, I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, so this is going to be uh, the player, uh, SK Sprite Node equals SK Sprite Node. Oddly enough, when I was... Uh, the code that I'm kind of following to recreate here. I have that as an SK node, not as an SK sprite node. So we'll see if that makes any difference. Uh, but uh, all right, so again, declaring the player variable. So I get to use it in all my other functions over here. And now what we want to do is associate that red square that we've got in there, um, or basically make that red square be this variable, okay? Uh, and it's not that hard. And you're going to do things like that, this, a lot of times when you are programming games. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if self uh, child node with name, okay. And actually, in this case, unlike what we're doing up here, I really am kind of assuming that there's only going to be one 
uh, instance name player out there. Again, like I said, in theory, you could add more than one, but then if you're going to do something like that, you'd probably want to iterate through all the children, and uh, I don't know what you would do at that point. Um, all right, so self, that child node with name. All right, so if, if we find this guy, name player, then what we're going to try to do is go over here and write the player is going to equal self that child node with name. Uh, here's where I bet I'm butt up against my better judgment by changing code around while I'm teaching it. Um, but I'm going to let the code compiler figure that out. Let's see. Uh, one thing I do want to do is uh, run the uh, the action that I just uh, created. So basically, it's going to just automatically apply those textures to it. Uh, here we go. I think we've already run into the uh, uh, one of the changes that we have to make. Nice thing about Xcode is it is going to usually warn you. So insert as SK sprite node. I bet you that solves the problem. Sure enough, uh, I don't see any other errors coming up. Uh, okay, so yeah, like I was saying, I do want to apply that action, the looping animation of the player chomping, and uh, that's going to be another variable that I do need to set up over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write var chomp action. Okay, and one of the reasons I'm declaring this as a variable is because we're going to end up using it or starting and stopping it off and on throughout the rest of the code. So all I need to do is put in here SK action named and then whatever I named it in our actions file. So if you go back over here, if you remember, chomp, okay, right? Now you're going to see that again right there, chomp. Uh, and the only thing it wants us to do is uh, kind of explicitly um, uh, put that exclamation in there and say, hey, you know what, this thing does exist, all right? My best interpretation of it force it to be what it should be okay all right so uh the player is gonna sure i butchered that explanation uh the player dot run chomp action okay with key and this putting in the key here matters a little bit less initially but um Cool thing about actions is, you know, we might have multiple uh, actions running on the same um, thing, okay? So in this case, uh, I'm gonna call this particular action uh, chomp. I might make another one later that's called move, okay? And that key might be called movement, right? Uh, and you'd use these by uh, kind of uh, just starting, you could start and stop them. Um, you know, basically it's an, an identifier for uh, the action itself. and I'd say the most important thing you could kind of absorb right now is just the fact that you can have more than one action running on a uh, an SK node. Okay, or SK sprite node in this case. <clears throat> uh, all right, I think we have got that. Uh, let's go and just see how it looks. Okay, so I had to move them over just a little bit so we could actually see them. Uh, one of the things we'll address in a moment is just the fact that uh, if you do run this on a uh, iPhone 11 or one that's not oriented like the iPhone 8, it um, or has a different screen size, it, it's cutting off some of this, right? Um, but what I want to do is actually want to uh, add a camera to this scene so we have our camera following around the guy the whole time. Uh, if you don't want to have a camera following the guy, then uh, by all means, go ahead and feel free to change the uh, the, the width and height of the scene itself so it, it, it better fits into, um, you know, the newer iPhone uh, dimensions over this way. Uh, another thing you could do too is, um, let me just undo moving this guy, is uh, uh, change the scaling of the camera so it's it basically pans out a little bit uh, based on a particular device. So uh, keep that in mind. That could be something that you look into on your own. Uh, and I guess, yeah, you know what, let's go ahead and add that camera in right now. So we're just kind of checking off the list, all of our different things that we need to do to set this thing up. Kind of going in a, whoops, camera. Okay, there it is. So I'll just drop this guy on here. If you want, you could go ahead and center it right up with your character. Uh, but you don't have to because it's going to snap to him in a moment anyway. Uh, so I'm going to put in here a, a name of camera. Yep, can you imagine that? And since this code looks so similar to what we just uh, set up a moment ago with our player, Let's go ahead and just write in here or paste it in here. If self.childnode with name camera is, uh, does not equal nil, so basically we found it, then the camera, we're going to declare this in a second, equals self.childnode uh, with name camera as sk camera node. And what we're going to do then is 
uh, go back over here to the top of the file and declare our actual camera okay so far the camera sk camera node is this going to equal sk camera node and there's nothing to to write within these parentheses uh, so um that is not all we have to do to make it so that we're seeing through the camera's eyes uh, to do that we just write in here self now self in this case refers to the scene itself right there's uh, I'm not I'm not writing something like the player die camera right I'm just writing self inside of here uh, is gonna equal the camera and sprite kit is gonna know what to do from that point on and <clears throat> when we build this what we should now see is that the uh, kind of top half and the uh, right side of that maze is cut off a little bit and we are centered directly on our little player so if I kind of minimize this a little bit you can you can see hey clearly this guy is the camera is right there focused on him and even though we uh, the uh, we're not moving the, the player around right now uh, what we could do is we could go ahead and paste in this or copy in whatever you want yeah paste it in <laughs> copy and paste it the uh, this line of code um, well, why am I pasting it? It's so simple. Um, we're just writing the camera dot position is going to equal the player dot position. So remember, this update statement gets run every frame, so potentially 60 frames per second. So whenever our player does start moving around, this camera is going to move along with it, right? So you know when he gets out to here, we're going to start to not see that side of the the uh, the maze, um, which in a sense really lends itself to creating a much bigger maze right uh and and actually a true maze i mean you know uh, pac-man is not really a maze game it's just kind of a uh, a boundary game you, you you're trying not to get trapped in the one thing but you could very easily uh turn this into a, a a real true maze game where uh you know because you're not sort of seeing the whole screen at once uh and potentially this could be way bigger than you know just one of these squares over here so imagine if this was like you know eight times the size uh, and you're still doing kind of Pac-Man related things, avoiding stuff and stuff like that. Um, it could potentially be a really uh, a cool game at that point. And um, I'm sure there's one already out there like it, but uh, now you get a chance to program it. Okay, so let's do this. Before we hightail it out of here, I'm going to add in one more thing. All right, so in all these little spots where we don't have a tile, you might have noticed that we put in uh we added in an asset uh, called dot all right that dot p dot png file i'm just going to write in here let new node sk sprite node remember now i'm i'm back in our this function where we're setting up our scene based on a tile map and i'm going to write uh, sk sprite node okay image named dot Okay, now that is going to refer to this little dot right here. It's just basically one, it's not one pixel, but it kind of looks like one pixel. All right, now our new node.position, uh, there's no way I spelled that right. Yeah, I knew that looked wrong. Uh, is going to equal our new point converted. Okay, and when you're programmably adding a child like this or a node like this, you want to write self dot add child again. Self is just referring to the scene itself, and then if we wanted, actually no, we do need to do this. Uh, we're going to write here new node dot name is going to equal, and just for the fun of it, I'm going to capitalize it dot. Uh, so new node dot name equals dot. And what on earth are you possibly complaining about right here? What did I do wrong? Uh, replace. Oh, I've. Uh, yeah, well, it's got to be image name, doesn't it? Okay, so now look at this. This is the, kind of the grand reveal at the end of this particular tutorial. And all those empty spots, we're going to get dots. Look at that. Even one right on top of that guy. Um, <clears throat> so, yes. How cool is that? Now we have. Uh, used our tile map uh, not only for available spots that we can move to but also for just kind of you know uh, adding in stuff at uh, at runtime right can you imagine if you had to go through here and uh, you know copy and paste one after another to design this level I mean just the very fact that we were able to paint this level essentially is uh, neat in itself uh, so when we come back 
guess what? We're going to move this player around. Did I say that the last lesson, too, that we we're going to move the player around? Well, guess what? Now we're really going to do it this next time.